All right, today we're talking about using image targets in Adobe Aero. So there's lots of players out there in the image tracking sphere. You got things like Vuforia, Google AR Core, Facebook, Spark AR Player. And look, they all want to be that one, that one solution that everyone utilizes. And it looks like Adobe Aero also wants to join that game. Now they might be a little bit late to it, but they're still joining it. And they allow users to use a thing called image anchors now. I'm going to take you through how to actually utilize them. But look, you might be asking, why am I even looking at this? If there's all these other players out there that are probably better solutions, why look at it? Well, this was me two weeks ago in ISO. Okay, so if you're new to Adobe Aero, I definitely recommend going through and checking out our previous videos to see the one about getting started with Adobe Aero. But I'm gonna assume you have it installed on your phone or your iPad, whatever you're utilizing, and you're able to go through and set stuff up. So I'm gonna go through, set up a quick demo here. I'm not gonna go through step by step how I'm doing it. I'll expect you to have watched that video first. So let's get to it. Okay, so we've gone through and we've set up a demo project, just something super basic. Let's jump in here, let's get it loading, and let's scan around the room so we can place it down. And there we go, we can see our person there. If I bend down here, you can see he's uh, in front of a desk and you click on him. My apologies, I'm not in preview mode. If you click on him, he bounces up and we have that sort of movement. So. That's our demo project. Let's now turn that into a mode where we can track based on an image. So in our mode here, we actually want to deselect everything. So we're just on this, be able to add. And in the bottom right here, we have these little buttons. And in this, it's got what things anchor to. And so in this case, it's just horizontal surface. But if we click on that, we change the type, we can actually set this to an image. So I'm gonna pull this from an image on my camera roll, which is uh, just this one. And that's going to be our, our image that we're going to use. So we're going to hit done. And that's pretty much it. Now we hit preview and it says, please find this image. So you can see behind me here, I've got all these different sized images. We're going to go through and test them out on different sizes. So the first one is A3. It's massive. And I might get out of frame here, but you can see he, uh, he's sitting on that target there. You hit him, he can bounce off the, uh, the image target there. And that is a, a good example of what can go wrong with an image target is that the rotation of these is set for a ground plane by default. Whereas you almost want him to have a rotation where it's vertical to the actual plane. So I'm going to quickly change these settings and we're going to go through and test each of these targets and see what size is too big, what size is too small. So let's get back to that. Okay, so we changed his rotation around. He uh, is not perfect. There is definitely still some issues, but we now have him at least pointing the right way. So let's uh, let's load him up. Let's get him going. So we need to we firstly need to be able to place down. So cool. Let's just place it there. Let's go to preview mode, and it wants us to find the target. So again, we we did this one a second ago, but let's now scan the big one again. And we can see the guy there. If we click on him, yeah, that's the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the issue with he, he sort of bounces forwards instead of up. But look, for now, that's going to do. So that's that's our big target. Let's go to another target here, which is our A4. Full size A4, no borders. Again, no issue. We can uh, I can hold this phone straight. Uh, we can we can click on him. He bounces forward again. Bounces the wrong direction, but he bounces forward nonetheless. So then I went with, well, if those sizes work, because that's good, that, that's the sort of sizing you're definitely going to want in the real life. Um, you're probably going to want a lot bigger too. Uh, I don't particularly have a way to test like crazy sizes, so this was sort of good enough for me as a, as a large test. Uh, but what if you want to get smaller, like say a business card or an envelope, what sort of level can you go to? So we've got here a few tests, we've got 50% scale, 
10% scale, 5% scale, and 1% scale. I want you guys to write in the comments what uh, level here you think it will actually fail at, uh, because, spoiler alert, it does fail at a level here. So, let's go through and check these out one by one. So, 50% works. So we can click on him, he bounces. It's worth noting that these uh, scenes do scale down with the, uh, uh, with the actual image size as well, because we saw with the A3, it's very large compared to this 50%. So it is scaling with your target. So, 50% works, great. One next, 10%. <laughs> that is not the 10% target. There's the 10% target, and we click on him, he does a little tiny bounce, but he's very shaky. And this is an issue uh, that goes around many solutions, things like Vuforia and Spark AR. When the target's smaller, it becomes much more shaky the more that it moves, it moves around. 10% worked. 5%, how are we looking for 5%? Let's check it out. So 5%, I found, is very difficult to pick up. But what I found is if you hold your phone incredibly still in front of it, very close to the target, it can actually pick it up. So we can click on it still, he bounces around and it's perfect. So 5% still works. And we have what I consider is a tiny dot on the page of 1%. 1% is very small. Let's, uh, let's try scan 1% now. And the issue with 1% I found is the camera can never quite get in focus. It can never quite understand what it's looking at and when it's too far back, when it is in focus, it just doesn't know what it is because there's not enough feature points on it to actually grab hold of. So 1% is too small. 5% is probably too small again because you have to be so close to it and hold your phone incredibly still. 10% is probably like the minimum that you want to go with. If you're trying to get as small as possible, that's the sort of size you want it so that a user can actually be able to grab hold of it quite simply. You got your image targets set up and usable you're questioning how do you actually utilize that in the real world sense like how can i give my image target that's on my phone and allow someone to scan it elsewhere and there's a few options here uh, you can actually share this as a link and what will be required is you create a link it will eventually create one look this does take a ridiculous like, weirdly a long amount of time like five minutes it took for me um, it might be longer if there's more assets in the actual file itself. But I also run into an issue. So this link is only usable for an iPad and iPhone, and that is because it is uh, an Adobe Aero product, which is only on iPad and iPhone. So you are cutting out a section of your market there, as well as that they have to access it through a link, and that's assuming the link works. I created one before as an example, it failed. I would click through from my phone, from Chrome, and try to click on open in Adobe Aero. And it would come up saying invalid. So there is some sort of technical limitation here around utilizing the sharing, creating a link. The other options uh, are to export as a .real file and to export as a USDZ file, a universal scene description. And there's a couple issues here. .real, uh, as far as I can tell, a user would have to download that onto their iPhone or iPad, then use the import function on Adobe Aero to import that into their own Adobe Aero, uh, Adobe Aero account, and then use it as a preview mode. But that doesn't stop them from hitting like edit and changing all the information in it. So that's not a real solution then, you know? Like, so if they can just edit the information, it's not a published piece on the internet. It's not a published piece for someone to easily utilize. And the obvious choice here is the USDZ, because we've done that in the past. Like if you want to know how to export a USDZ, go back into the Third Aurora channel, you'll find a, a video about how to use USDZ with Adobe Aero. But the issue here is that when you load a USDZ, it has the option to tap, use an object, or place it down on the ground. And when you choose to place it down on the ground, it does not then follow through with the image tracking side. So let me go through, export this as a USDZ, and show you this in action, but just know that this doesn't work as an image tracker. It just allows a user to place it down on a plane like any other Adobe Aero export. Okay, so I've got the USDZ file ready to go. I thought I'd try show you the create a link thing first though. So 
I've sent a link to myself. This is just with a test project from before. And this is the page you get shown. So you get view in augmented reality, get the free Adobe Aero app to continue to un untitled one.real. And that's my file from before. So let's go open in Adobe Aero. We click it. It's loading, loading, loading. It wants us to open the Adobe Aero app. And then failed. I mean, you can see it failed to load. Failed to load then is getting all these crazy crazy errors let's try hit reset in case that doesn't do anything but yeah it uh it doesn't like it so <laughs> that that's what I was running into basically when I was doing it before so let me close that let me open up the USDZ file now because I have that ready to go on my phone as well okay so we've got the area here we can see the USDZ we're able to place it down in AR uh, we can't click on him because this was an issue before where if you try to click on something or use the interaction in USDZ it won't work. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Like I, I have it on the ground now. Uh, if I go to scan any of these targets, it just does nothing. So it basically is the same as any other USDZ. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't allow for the usage of interaction or the image target side. And that's why this is pretty useless, I guess. The links don't seem to work. The USDZs don't seem to work. The dot reels I've had trouble getting, but even still, someone would have to open that on their iPhone or iPad and use an Adobe Aero account. So it's not perfect, that's for sure. Um, and there's probably better solutions that you could be looking at. So look, all that being said, is it actually worth utilizing Adobe Aero for your own sort of image targets? Look, probably not. Um, I haven't had a great experience, haven't found the sharing particularly easy with other users, and especially to hold on to that image tracking side of things. Um, if you're looking to just place down 3D models onto your actual elements, onto your actual images, and check it out, see what it might look like, it's a good conceptual piece. To be actually utilizing it for image tracking, I'd have to say no, it's it's not a good solution. Those things like Vuforia, Spark AR that do offer a lot more and a lot uh, easier to share than what Adobe Aero does. But look guys, if you have any other ideas, any other comments around that, please share them in the comments. And until next time, I'll see you then.